Hi everyone, I'm Rick the Pilot Teacher and I'm currently out working with the uh, Forestry Service working on their wildfires. Some of you have asked um, what do helicopters do on wildfires? So I'm going to give you a bit of a quick intro as to uh, what I've been doing on this fire. So we want to drop in is one of the main functions of a helicopter on the fire. Here we have a Bell 212 with a belly tank. It's about 400 gallons and he's just dropped his initial attack crew off. He's gone and filled up using his snorkel and now he's going to come in and dump 400 gallons of water onto this small fire. So we can hopefully get this fire out before it starts spreading. The belly tanks allow for a quick rapid movements, quick turnarounds. Using the uh, snorkel here as you can see takes between 30 to 60 seconds depending on the tank that they have on um, just to fill it and then they're back on the, uh, the fire again so it can be rapid amount of water. This last drop, <laughs> the pilot was mad because he'd sucked out of a, a pond that was really dirty so he was off for a, a different dip site on the next one. Here we've got Ken and his 205 using a Bambi bucket. He's got a bit of a swing on it here so he can dump water down the edge of the fire. This is another way that's used to fight the fires. And here you've got uh, the view that I have when I've got my uh, fast bucket on. This was a, a very small fire that I was uh, called to. That we fired out an initial attack crew, but they were on the top of a rock and there was no water source nearby. We managed to get most of the fire out using hand tools and basically kicking the fire out. It was just a small one but they had some hot spots and they needed some bucket support so um, this is where I got called in with my fast bucket and uh, just to get to the nearest dip site and dump some water on their fire for them to help get it out. To help me, the guys had actually marked out on the ground using the uh, pink flagging tape here. Makes it e really easy for me to see exactly where they want the water. As you can see, look, it's just rock everywhere. So the three bags here, each bag contains 400 feet of hose. And we've got spare pump, we've got gas, we've got a pump tool kit. Anything that a crew needs. So if a pump goes down, we can get out there and get it to them quickly so that they're not without water. The other thing that we deliver a lot is water, Gatorade, food, because our crews camp out on the fire and when it's 35 you know, degrees Celsius in the summer, it gets hot and they get to a lot of water. So here I'm just coming down, landing on a bit of a peninsula, just kind of making sure that uh, the aircraft's gonna be nice and secure, using my chin mirrors here, just to make sure that the belly of the aircraft is clear before I seat it down make sure it's nice and secure before the fire tech gets out to deliver his gear to the crews. So if you've seen in one of my other videos, one of the things that we're allowed to do here is to free drop bags of hose. When the crews are out in the middle of the fire, these packs weigh 60 pounds a piece. And if you've got to drag them and carry them out on your back, you know, for a couple of miles, it's a tough slog. So one of the things that we can do is we can get over the crews, talk with them on the radio, find out exactly where they are, get into a hover, and once they're clear, we can drop them hose. And it works really good. It really saves their energy. 
especially when you've got to put a fire hose all the way around the perimeter of the fire. We can go and drop hose at various points around the fire to really help those guys out. And once the crews have got the fire out, we need to get all that gear back. So instead of them hiking it all out, they can bundle it together in an area. We can go and give them a net and then I can come in with my long line. Now, if any of you guys have done any long lining yet, you'll know that flying an empty hook is one of the hardest things to do. Um, I've only got about 80 hours total of long line time. So <laughs> a bit of a swing on here. <laughs> I get the hook there eventually, but it just takes a little bit more time and it doesn't look anywhere near as smooth and professional as the guys that have got thousands of hours doing it. But I just take my time and it gets there eventually and I just keep practicing with every time. And that's what you guys need to do. Just every time you get a chance, just practice to be smooth and slow and just get better and better with each time. In the net here we've got bags of hose and jerry cans of gas that they've finished using and we're basically just demobilizing everything off the fire so it works really good there'll be like half a dozen sites around a fire and i'll just come in with my hook and basically start slinging it out so they don't have to move it This fire worked out good. It was about 10, 15 miles from the fire base. So I just slung the gear back to the base and it worked out really good because each time I came in with my net, by the time I came back with the next load, the fire crews on the base had already cleared out all the, uh, all the gear. So my landing area was clear. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough. Sometimes I get a little bit of a swing on at the bottom. Um, they say you're not supposed to look at your your hook or your shadow but sometimes you do and then you get a bit of a swing on and it's just frustrating so you have to kind of try and work the aircraft to minimize the swing and uh, I always like to try and put my net down nice and smooth without any swing on it so it just takes a little bit of time. Here you can see from the ground what it kind of looks like this was another fire where we were demobilizing and there was about three sites here and as you can see lots of jerry cans of gas lots of bags of hose so it was a perfect chance for me to practice my long line again. So it's just every time I get on the line, I just like to take my time, always try and pick up the hook directly off the ground without any swing, set it over the load and pick the load up without any swing. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, but it's all about practice in this game. And uh, yeah, just try your best and be smooth and slow with each time. And uh, with time and practice, precision gets better. So once I'd slung all this stuff out, I came back, picked up the crews and took them back down to the staging area. So this fire was done and everything was uh, pulled off. So we leave the area nice and pristine. So this fire caught us off guard. It had been really smoky for a few days and it finally cleared and we got out and this big behemoth was waiting for us. So um, yeah, I'm in, we're flying circles around it. Firetech is doing his initial report back to Fire HQ so they can start to make a plan of action of how many crews they need to send to it. As you can see, it's starting to get quite a big fire. When a fire gets quite big like that, what we'll do is we'll call in the air tankers straight away. Uh, this was a cool flight. I was up for about an hour and a half working with the tankers. They were at 2,000 feet and below. I had to maintain my orbit at 2,500. And their bird dog, which was their controller, 
was at 3,000 feet and we're all doing orbits. There was three tankers and it worked good. This one is another fire. We called in for the Bell 212 with its initial attack crew. We'd found a place for them to land that was nearest to the fire. He's just dropped his crew off, he's tanked up. Now he's coming in and he's gonna start dumping water on this fire whilst his crews start mobilizing and humping into the, uh, the fire, getting all their gear in there. So whilst they're doing that, he's gonna dump water on it until he gets, uh, has to go for fuel. So helicopters are great for moving crews into a fire and out of a fire. We've got to move a lot of ground crews and the best way is using the helicopters. The mediums will do most of the uh, crew moving but the A-stars will do it too. One of the things they're practicing here is a hover exit. Um, all the fire crews need to be certified to get out of the aircraft and get into it from a hover because sometimes we can't land. Aerial ignition is basically setting fire to the fire. Uh, this is a machine, it's called a Primo machine, and it uses these spheres called Primo spheres. And what it does is it's a machine that injects each of these spheres with glycol as it exits through the machine. Each ball has potassium permanganate powder in it, and when it injects it with the glycol about 20 to 30 seconds later, we get this chemical reaction and the ball catches fire. So this works great, so we can go fly along and start ejecting these balls out of the machine and when they hit the ground they start the fire and we can start burning areas ahead of the fire to try and basically get rid of the fuel before the fire gets there. So the other way is drip torching and this is basically a tank of gasoline with an agent mixed into it that gels it up, it's a bit like napalm. Um, and what we do here is we light a line of fire ahead of the fire so that by the time the fire gets to it, all the fuel is burned and it kind of creates a bit of a fire break. Um, it works really well, but you've got to get the plan done right. So here we've got a thermal imaging camera on the front of this Long Ranger. They use that, they go up at first light and they're looking for the hot spots. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to fly around the fire during the day, keeping an eye on the areas, making sure the ground crews are not in areas of danger if the wind's going to shift. And the fire techs will talk to their guys on the ground, give them a plan of action, say I want you to hit the west flank, east flank, and we'll also use the aircraft to fly the perimeter so that we can map it each day so that we can get an idea of how big it is. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this kind of stuff, I have videos like this all the time, trying to show you what I get up to as a daily basis as a helicopter pilot. And also then I also do all the videos that kind of teach you stuff about the helicopters, stuff that uh, is kind of cool to know. So if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get to see all the other videos that I create. And if you liked it, hit that thumbs up button, it really helps the channel out. And uh, stay safe and I'll see you next time.